when you hit record right. or on air, it's going to start broadcasting live on your YouTube site, that's account that you have this hooked up through. Yeah, and that's what I did. I just wanted to know because um, what would be nice, <clears throat> I used to use Ustream a lot, and what would be nice is if you knew ahead of time of what the um, the YouTube URL would be for wow. this so that you could tell people, you know, let's say you, you wanted to do a panel, like the, the four of us wanted to talk about something, and we wanted to invite a lot of people ahead of time. I don't know how you do that, you know, how you let them know. Well, like, okay, well, we're doing a we're doing one of these on-air things next uh, Tuesday at, uh, at 10 Central Time with Ryan and Chris. And what we did is we already created the website or the web page. And then as soon as we do, we set up this on air, we're going to grab that link and drop it into the web page. So we've already sent the web page link out to the people. So does that make sense? Yeah, I think so. I think So you're telling them to go here and the link will be there is how you That's did right. it. That's right. Like we already uh, sent out the link today, people, today in the email. We sent out the email and the link is in the email. So if they click on it right now, they just go to a blank web page. Right. But if, when they click on it at ten o'clock in the morning, we're going to grab that URL and or not the URL that embedded well, code and throw it in there. So basically, you did a workaround because you know, like again with Ustream, what they would do, you've always got the same channel that they give you, so it's always your you know once you sign up for Ustream, you have your own link always, and so you can tell people I'm going to start. You know, you, you can send it to them a month ahead of time and stay on such and such a day. Click here and you'll see the live stream. That was all I was asking. You know, but I think you've answered the question. Yeah. So it's um, I don't know. You know, there. I'm thinking of this because um, the ACT group and others were thinking of using this for a, a lot of and Ames Kitty Ambers. I was talking to about with with her doing some stuff the other day, and it would be fun to be able to do a panel like this. Let people know ahead of time, like every Tuesday, click in here. But your your solution could work. I mean, I, I hey Rick, I have you doing. have you connected with Joey Gianjola up in yeah. Cleveland? Yeah, because I'm telling you what he is on the hook with that kind of stuff. He okay. it's pretty amazing. I did a a panel with him oh a few months ago, and he he did everything that you're saying. I mean he he got it all created. He did all this tech stuff that was way beyond me. But then he promoted it. I mean he had it on you know and then people joined and I mean he he did a really bang up job on it. So yeah, if he that's is good. The solution you're looking for, I would connect with him. He's very helpful. Uh, and he really has a lot of knowledge about it. Okay, thanks. C i a n t o l a. Is it? Yeah, yeah. Last name. Hey, mm -hmm. have have you guys given any thought to using this technology at all with your customers? I'm thinking, Chris. You know, for example, getting some of your uh, your community leaders together. You know, that group you have, and uh, getting them to do something like this, and then streaming it out to your community. And maybe you do a, you know something to promote one of your one of your customers or partners or you do something around um, the community disaster preparedness or I don't know just something yeah we're doing a lot a lot live stream now we just uh, um, got a bunch of technology and hooked it up so that people can see um, what's going on in the center of town we have quite a few military men and women oh. that are away and wow. I had technology set up about eight nine years ago because I had a, um, a tech guy that rented from me in my office in my office <laughs> but he set it up and um, I, I just went on and um, upgraded everything to night vision wow. um, so we've been getting a lot of feedback right on our website it's down right now because uh, we had some really bad storms and um, we're out here for a little bit till they get that up and running but right on on uh, Paradiso insurance.com we have a live stream right on um, uh, my Stafford springs.com which is a local website that we keep going for the local townspeople, everything yes. that's going on with whether it's uh, what sports is going on, anything that's going on is is on there, but it's amazing on how many people are actually saying, hey, it's down. I probably got about 50 <laughs> texts yesterday. There's the problem. <laughs> 58 or so texts that's saying, it's down. The live stream yeah. is down, and it's, yeah. it's just funny, but people love it. But we, I really did it for the military men and women because a lot of parents were saying, hey, I, my – son can see me I go there and I oh cool I oh everybody. nice as the technology nor do they have the money for the technology so yeah yeah uh, and then we have an hour a week that we keep it open there's a room and they can communicate so it's you can actually hear 
It's, when I say it's 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 just it's wicked. It's it's unbelievable. That's really nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was that's that's cool. But I was thinking even like getting a group of your people and doing a hangout like this, and then recording it um, about about an a, a group, you know, a, a town project or event or something. Yeah. Have a discussion about it, mm -hmm. posting the posting the hangout, and so you'd have you know. The the person it would be like you an online interview kind of thing, but with yeah. maybe three or four people, a panel kind of thing. I don't know. I just Great. wondered if anybody's really started using this this specific technology to do that. I have not. I haven't. Okay. Go ahead, Carrie. I'm sorry. No, I just said I haven't either. I mean, I gotta sleep sometimes, so you know. <laughs> yeah, but Carrie, you know, with your insurance goddess thing, I think you could have a lot of fun with that. You oh, know, good you could point. have. You know what? I could have so much fun with that if I didn't have to deal with all this insurance BS. <laughs> you, know what, you know what I'm saying, though? Yeah. If I didn't have to fight with underwriters and all that other nonsense that I talked about yesterday in my blog post, boy, that would free up a lot of time, wouldn't it? Gary, it it's is a what hard it is, market. though, right? I mean, it's going to well, get worse. You know, it also takes us into a discussion that Carrie wanted to have. Mm -hmm. And that I think is a valid discussion that Ryan and I fight a lot about. I'm trying to make sure I can hear you guys. Um, when you're going to use this with your clients, the number one issue being the client. Yep. Because they're not on this. I mean, I know we can sit here and go around and around about this. Believe me, Ryan and I have had a lot of vodka and cranberries over this <laughs> damn discussion. But I'm just telling you right now, if I went and grabbed all of my clients or 100 people off the street in Centralia or almost anywhere in America, I would say less than two of them would have actually be on this platform. So I think I'm not saying taking away from Google+. Plus. I think it's the largest thing coming. I think it's, 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 it's so huge, it's unbelievable. But right now, the only people that are on Google+, Plus, not the only, but 90% of the people that are on Google+, Plus are marketers trying to market to other people about marketing. I mean, that's what's out there right now. Or well, text people talking well, about Google+. Plus. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, I, you know, I've got a lot of different people. I've got several hundred um, insurance people that are on it um, and other small business people. Insurance right? people. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Be, well, but so what I'm. Yes, I understand. And but that being said, I think that there's. So here's what my suggestion would be. Just like you do your, your you know, the the hangout you're using, um, Jason, is what if you had, you know, the three or four people having a discussion about some of that. You're just sending them the link. They don't even have to be on Google Plus. They can watch it because it's on YouTube. So what I'm saying is, is create a panel discussion about something, not have them, you know, and, and if you have to have people that are going to be on that panel, you find a couple business leaders in town and you set them up. I mean, it's yep. like a two-second thing, and it's good for them anyway. They really should have, you know, because of Google Local and everything, mm -hmm. they really need to have a plus account so that their their local business gets found. You set them up. You say, okay, we're going to do this conversation next Thursday. You then record it and and you send a link out after the fact if you want to to other customers or other people in the town or in that community that would be interested to it. And again, they don't have to be on Google Plus at all. So that's true. That's true. I, that's I, I think it's just a great way to create. A conversation. That's all I'm yep. saying. That's got significant potential. The, yeah. The problem, Rick, is um, you know I just spoke with SIAA members, sand the sand cluster out in New Jersey this week. Yeah. And put on a workshop, and I seventy five percent didn't have websites, and ninety eight percent didn't have Google Plus. Yeah. And about fifteen percent had Facebook. Um, fan page for their agency and you're like yeah. wow yeah that's you know and they could not grasp the fact that I have three I just hired my fourth she starts Tuesday my fourth marketing person they cannot yeah. fathom even having a part time no like do you know not one person out of those 68 agencies not one had a business plan yeah are you well but but that's not not I mean this is not to not this isn't a negative comment it's I think a reality comment for that group if they're SAII they're really looking to that cluster to pretty much provide everything for them and I think the association then you know the may want to think about beginning to do some of that stuff but those agencies are tend to be smaller generally speaking and are are and of course it would be a great these are I'm not saying that the tools aren't valuable but that doesn't surprise me necessarily 
that being said, you know, if you look at um, Jason Hopner's study, you know, the B.H. Burke study they did, it's actually, it was actually surprising. 75% of the agents that he surveyed, um, or actually 90-something, or well, was over, well over 70% have a pretty strong web presence and almost all of them were on Facebook. Um, fewer as you drop down. I don't remember all the specifics, but it was actually somewhat encouraging from mm. that perspective. I like so I it. think I think bigger, larger agencies or, or mid mid size agencies are now beginning to do some large research. agencies, I mean I had True North come in. They came in yeah. with they, they're nice, nice. They can't get out of their own way. They go up yeah. the line, up the line for Facebook. Fan. I'm like, so to make a post, I mean, it's going to take you two days to get approval. Yeah. I mean, who, who? I mean, yeah, never going to work. No, yeah, and that, and that, that's a really great point because I do think you find with larger organizations, which includes carriers, by the way, and in some cases associations, that is their biggest problem. They can't get out of their own way. They don't. It, the way to solve some of that is to have a really good social media plan that that dis defines how people act and behave. Then you've got to trust your people. You hired good people, let them go. I mean, you let them post. Them to do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hey, Rick, Absolutely. Have you um? You know, I'm just throwing this out there. Have you guys or you or Peter ever thought about having um? And I don't know if there's somebody out there that does um, social media strategies. Um, and or if someone's really good at it at brand camp you know to talk about that right and we will give an example yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We will. Um, actually, ban by the way, uh, the uh, the registration is going to be open for Brand Camp on um, probably June. I don't know, first, second, third, some somewhere in that time frame, um, and we'll have a listing of all of the uh, the particular the agenda. So that'll be up online here shortly. Uh, you know, in a week or ten days or whatever it is. But yes, and what we what we do is talk a lot about uh, well one of the things we're going to do is you know we group source an awful lot of the sessions and so we're going to have that ted like set grouping where people can talk about specific things and you know that might be something you'd even like to to talk about um, but we'll have an opportunity to do that absolutely because i just think it's so critical it, i mean it is and, it and, is and there's so much to learn i'm sure there's experts out there i mean i know what i'm doing is working but i would love to improve it yeah, I, yeah. I think there's a lot that I could improve. It's just well, and, and that's the process. You got to get in it, you know. And then you start, you know, you start working on this, and you start understanding what really is working and what's not working, and and tweaking it. Because I, I think I think we're still at the infancy stage of a lot of this stuff, and it just is. It's progressing, it's maturing, but we're all learning. Um, oh yeah. You know, I spend a lot of my time reading an awful lot of stuff about all of this, and um, wow. It's and just, you're liking Vine, I see. Yeah. We're yeah. having a blast with that. <laughs> I saw that, yes. Yeah, yeah we, 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 we've probably done about 800. Of, I mean, she probably did 60, 70 of them just yesterday, but we're, really? we're trying to make some good ones for Memorial Day for in honor of oh, our cool. fallen yeah. people. Yeah, 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 cool. Have, you, have, uh, have Jason um, or Carrie, have you guys used Vine at all? Do you know yeah. what Vine is? Yeah. Just a little it's, bit. Yeah, it's kind of fun. It takes some getting used to to do, you know, to, to see how it all because it, you know, when it loops, you want to make sure that it makes some sense and it's working well. But um, it's pretty darn interesting, I think. Uh, I've seen some people like you, Chris, do some very creative things with Vine. Um, it makes you focus big time. Well, <laughs> it, it does. I mean, if you only have six seconds, you better get your message out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, it does. It's it's kind of like Twitter. You learn to be really right to the point, you know. From that standpoint. Yeah. No, I haven't explained what it is. I've heard somebody talk about it, but I can't remember anything about it. Well, it's a it's a it's a mobile app that you get to pretty much run from a smartphone and it gives you 6 seconds to record video. So, uh, you know, six seconds isn't a lot, and you and so you can do. For example, here's what I, here's one of the ones I did, and and Chris, you could share some of the things you've done. But I, when we were at the recent um, ACT meeting in Las Vegas, I got there kind of a day early, and so I was saying, okay, what do you do before you know before the meetings start? And I took a picture of people gambling, and then I took another picture of people um, shopping.
and another picture of one of the restaurants and said eat and then I, sw I panned over to the swimming pool and said this is more like it you know <laughs> <laughs> and and so you can just do fun little things like that um, and then it just loops and it's 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 actually very very interesting but if you get if you've got an Android or a smartphone just go out and get fine uh, it's V-I-N-E and it posts to Twitter it's a it's a Twitter uh, application primarily. That's right. I think we got a new member joining us. We Hi, do. Hi, yeah, Brett. I hopped on late here. That's good. To, I, I want to learn from the experts. So. No, I was just hoping <laughs> you probably haven't slept in since you had the newborn, right? Oh, I get at least two to three hours a night, Chris. I'm in good shape. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Man. It's all good. Well, before, before it's gone, enjoy every minute of it because I'm try. I'm trying to, man. It's great. Absolutely it, precious. Precious, yeah. precious, beyond precious. Thank you. So, what do you guys think of the new Google Plus and their layout? And actually, the Hangouts are all different. If you, oh, so, so this is what I did want to mention too. You realize now that there's a Hangout app that just is a standalone app for your phone or your iPad, and so that's pretty cool actually. And actually, it can be a plug-in to Chrome. So you can just, by clicking that rather than going into Google Plus and hitting start a Hangout, you just click that and boom, you can start a Hangout. Or you, if you get a notice to join one, you know, it shows up on those as well. It's, it's well, what's cool. even awesome is that, like, I have Chris Paradiso in my, I was just looking at this this morning, he's in my contacts in my Android, and yep. when I hit it, it shows his number and all that, and it shows his email. Right underneath it, it says, click to hang out. And I can yeah. just click that, and immediately his phone will ring. And if he hits accept hangout, I mean, boom, instantly. I mean, it's almost like it's a video call. It yeah. is. Um, I've actually been using that with a friend of mine um, because I because he, he has an Android as well. I think you could probably do it on iPhones anyways. But yeah, with pretty FaceTime. Soon you guys yeah, well, you guys will all get rid of iPhone eventually because it's going downhill. But, you know, that, that's another story another time. <laughs> you so, woke up and but, smelled the coffee. Yeah. So, so, anyways, it's okay. Reality will hit you guys soon. So, yeah. the, 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 the Android. But, anyways, what, speaking truthfully, though, that, that Hangout is just – this is such the infant stage of it. I mean, this thing can be oh. used for so many gigantic things. It's ridiculous. It really, really is. I'm with you. Oh yeah, I agree. Did you guys see the Matt Cuts uh, video that what's coming down the road for SEO for Google? No. No. Tell us. Please see that video. And I probably watched it a hundred times just this morning, probably twenty times because I think I think there's a lot to read into what he's saying. He's he's adamant about the changes and the algorithm changes. They're going to be effective for small business. And they don't give um, advice on what they're doing. He just he constantly goes back to small business, small business, small business, um, and how the platforms are changing, and how um, people basically how companies are cheating, um, how they're not going to be able to cheat anymore, which is great. And that that all started about a year and a half ago when they caught J.C. Penney's um, and several other companies, but. I think it's great. It's coming out this summer. Um, they said it could be and will be the biggest Panda update um, that Google's ever had. So I, we should wow. expect big things. But it's only about four minutes. It's, it's, I posted it several times on LinkedIn, Facebook, uh, Google+. Plus. Um, if you just Google Matt Cuts, the latest update, um, Panda update that's coming, it's, it's fantastic. I would take the five minutes and listen to it. Okay. Hey, Chris. Um, question on that. Do you think with Google and the way they're going to do that, is that, is that going to implement more of the social as far as, I mean, you, know, you think about the, the SEO and people searching on Google for to, 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 to hit keywords and targets and find business owners. And obviously now in today's world, it happens just as much as going to Facebook or Google Plus or whatever and saying, hey, you guys know a plumber. You know, do you guys know an insurance agent? Um, it, it, do you think, do you see social media being part of that algorithm at some point where they can pull that and actually use that? as well? Well, if, if you study what Matt Cutt says, and I watch him like you can't believe, but it's <laughs> already being implemented right now. I'm not going to tell you it's social. You will be penalized. Your agency website will be penalized if you're not on Twitter right now. And, and that's a guarantee. If you go back and you go through his readings and, and, and things of that sort, 
Um, Facebook fan page is one of the most critical aspects, and I know most people say Google and Facebook dislike each other, but you got to understand the United States, the United States government, I'm sure, is involved because of antitrust and making sure that it's not a monopoly. Google can dictate, makes the rules, but Facebook right now, your fan book page is one of the most critical things to your SEL. Um, and I know Ryan and I talk about this all the time. He, he thinks content's more important. I say your Facebook fan page is more important. And I say your shares, likes, and comments are more, are more important. And then I would say content. And where I get that information is from Matt Cox. Um, no, I, I think that's true. Engagement in your community, I think, is huge. And, and whether the government's involved or not, Google, if it's going to be credible, can't, can't ignore Facebook or any of the right. other social media. They have to take that into account. I agree. Yeah, so it's interesting. But yeah. Facebook well, is not only that. I mean, ins insurance is if you go Google Centralia Insurance Illinois, insurance being an expensive, expensive word on the internet. Matter of yeah. fact, the most expensive. You, you, and you, Centralia Illinois Insurance. You put it in Google right now. The number one thing that pops up is not my my website. The number one thing that pops up is my Facebook site, and it's been like that for. A solid year or something like that. I mean, it's 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 huge. Uh, yeah. And I'm glad that Chris to hear that you and Ryan are having that argument because him <laughs> and I have that argument as well about that shit. Oh yeah, well, I, so, I've seen hey, it. I just take it from Matt Cutts. He's way bigger than me, way smarter than me, and way more powerful than I am. I just well, the two are the same. It's the same thing though, because if you're going to get people that are going to share and engage with you, the content has to be good, right? Right. So. So the two, I mean, you can't. It can't be one or the other. It's it's good content is what leads to great involvement, great in, great sharing, great uh, you know conversation, and that's what then uh, helps your Facebook or LinkedIn or Twitter account. But you can have great content, and if you don't place it in the right areas and it never gets seen, it's oh, never yeah. going to help you. So that's why yeah. you're right. I think uh, both are very important. I just think socially, it's much more important than I. I we always hear content is king, and I, my speeches are always content is queen. What's well, king is social, <laughs> and a lot of people laugh at me, but I, I believe that. And I think Brent, the biggest thing is, is I think this change is really going to be extremely strong on the social side because right, yeah. we saw it last year with the last update, well, major update, and we get these updates all the time, but not this major. And I think this one's really going to bring it down because you can't forget all these businesses, these social sites are making. They're going to make billions of dollars selling what we like to companies. Yeah, it's going to be it's it's a huge profit center. I mean, Nike knows if you love them. I mean, the coffee shops, Dunkin' Donuts, McDonald's. I mean, they know they know who to target. Yeah, that's those are good points. So, so hey, how do you spell this guy's last name? Matt, what, Chris? C U T T S. Cuts. If you go on YouTube, you can Google Matt Cuts. Oh, well. He's got his own blog sites. Um, he's basically the guy behind Google who's creating algorithm and algorithm changes. Okay. Brilliant guy. Brilliant. Chris, how do you use communities? I mean, do you do anything that locally with your, you know, all of your um, your uh, offline community as well? Connecting a community on Google Plus or not? I don't. We're, I do much, many more. Um, like last night, we had a um, a group meeting of businesses, and I I'm as much as I am social. I through the internet, I I'm more enjoyable to be social in groups. So I'm yeah. spending more times creating these circles and actually sitting with people. So we just created. Um, I I just call it a business mastermind. I found a a guy I really wanted to do business with, and I said, hey. He belongs to Entrepreneurs International, I think is what it's called. And uh, so Monday I met him. I walked out of there. I spent four hours with him. And I walked out of there. He's not. He's got about 13,000 customers. He owns a payroll company. He's an accountant. He's got about 15 accountants working for him. And then he does Merchant Circle. So he actually wants to put an insurance office out of there with me. But I laughed at the whole situation because here's a guy – that has every aisle named in his business. You want to, and he call, and he has a think tank. So he has a room that's painted all chalk. And every Friday for 20 minutes, they come in and everybody just splats ideas. And then wow. they come back and they look at them, review them, and they come back and they say, "Okay, let's put all of our minds together 
and, and when I say brilliant, this guy is brilliant. And I just, through these little meetings like this, there's only eight businesses per. We meet once a month, and I got about six of them that we've put together. And I mean, I'm going to pull more business out of these things, but I've already got business minds. I'm, I'm going to get street names for all my, for the offices, for the hallways. He's got a bell in there. I love the bell. <laughs> got it. With a big board. I just, you know, and then the quote. Hey, you know, you're. You're talking about the the painting or the the chalkboard. Yeah. My wall, all my all these two walls right here. My wife for Christmas went and got me. Um, it's just a paint. Yeah. And you paint it, and it and it turns your wall into a marker board. And so I yeah. can just grab, I can just grab one of these markers real quick, and I could just like I get a good idea, and I can just write it on the wall as fast as I can, and then it just comes off. It's just like a regular marker board. So. Uh, it, <laughs> I, I tell you, I, I've got I got stuff all over mine, here, and then I, I think it works wonderful. I put quotes on mine, but we, we have about fifteen of them around around the office. I I think they're just awesome. What a great way! If you have no staff, I guess it doesn't really make a difference. But you know, you probably you probably do it to keep track of what you're doing. But for other reasons, I just think it's brilliant. I you know. Change quotes. You so wait. So so if you have those around the office, you let other people just as they think of things or whatever jot stuff down on the board. Is that the idea or? Well, you're gonna laugh. We do a lot of tracking. So we have uh, boards that we we track how many new clients we took in for the day, how many we took in for the week, how much oh, okay. we wrote them with, and then I also have alternatives that have quotes on them. So when you go through, like my marketing, they have about six of them upstairs in one marketing office for creation of video. And it's got it's got a whole strategy of what's going on over the next. Always th those six of them. There's one that's for video, and the other five are for what's going on in the next five days. Cool. So, but I I just think it's it's just amazing when you go in and you and you find somebody who's a smart businessman, who's a, a true leader of a business, and how much you can pull out of that office. I'm actually bringing a good chunk of my business um, of my staff so that they can see. And these people are just. They love to work there. It, it's it was just oh yeah, awesome. it'd be fun. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> that's cool, Chris. I mean, that's, <laughs> I just like I said, my my favorite part of my job by far, no doubt about it, always been, always will be, is just sitting there with smart business owners and just learning and watching what they do and just taking it in and just going, how did you do that? And why do you love doing it? And it's just like cool. I mean, that's, that's what it's all about. And that's an awesome thing they do there. That's, that's a cool experience. It is. So, uh, what else is going on? You guys got any major plans for the weekend or celebration for all those that have given us the freedoms that we have today? Yep. Very important. Hey, I got your poem very... today. I thought that was good, Chris. I. It's important. We got to yeah. teach our kids. You know. Yep, that's true. Absolutely. Unfortunately, how many people aren't going to be here celebrating with our families because they're not here? They're overseas. Yep. So. Well, good. That's, yeah, for sure. Jason, what in the hell are you doing? <laughs> what? Pardon my <laughs> French. <laughs> is, there, is there something going on? <laughs> You're insane. I gotta see this. See, oh. <laughs> if you ha if you haven't what? seen that, you have to go to Google Effects, and then you can you can um, put hats on and facial yeah, hair yeah, and glasses. Yeah, effects over there on the left side. I can just go put, put on my costume, and then I'll feel right at home. Yes, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I mean, this could be right up your alley. <laughs> oh God, that's funny. Anyway, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you do. <laughs> you guys. Suddenly, we're all. Ten years old. I'm sure this does <laughs> does wonders to simulate conversation, doesn't it? Oh Jesus! Oh well, yeah. You know what? You do have to have fun in this business, or you will lose your mind. So that's all I'm saying. Well, what's also awesome about it is like if you get on one of these and you're worried about your hair, you can really like throw on a hat, you know, so that no one can like see your hair. It's perfect. <laughs> that's it. It is an effective <laughs> use of technology. It is. I think it's great. Well, when you talked about having great. fun, so here's Google, a major a major company putting Hangouts out there, and they do something like that. They make that available for people to have fun. I mean, that's pretty interesting, actually. Mm -hmm. Right. They're not taking they're not taking it all too seriously. 
you well, can. I'll tell you, uh, when we're talking, just to try and bring up a conversation, I'll brag for a minute. I did a promotion uh, for my uh, for my agency. I hadn't done one in like six, seven months. And, uh, you know, it was really crazy because I did the give me a quote uh, or let me quote your insurance or give me a referral. And I have to say that uh, it was by far my best, best, hands down, um, promotion I'd ever done. I got uh, the most that I had received, like in a in a in a couple things was is um, I can't really remember the one the the uh, case study I always use going for, uh, that I've used in my presentations is I got 19 referrals. That had been my most that I had received, but that was in a four week period, and I just did one for 10 days. I did a promotion, and I got 23 inbound actions. Wow. I believe, don't, don't hold it exactly to me, I believe 16 of them were referrals and then all the rest were actually people who called in for a quote. Now here's what's crazy I think we're looking at um, this whole thing. It had to do with the fact that before I was not getting as many, I was getting let's say 15 to 20 inbound actions for a, a four week period but my closing ratio was like 75 to 80 percent. As opposed to this time, I got 23, 24 inbound actions in a 10-day period, but my closing ratio is like 40 to 45 percent. So good. what I kind of figured out is, is I've I've done some thinking about this, and my only thought could be that it would have to do with the market that we're in, meaning that um, before I, the market was soft, so I didn't get as much um, people's rates. They were happy with their rates. Maybe their rates were steady or were going down. And th this is just my thought. I'm telling you guys this to, to get your guys in from and get your guys uh, your thoughts. But 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 the people who did interact with me were wanting to seriously interact with me because they wanted to do business, which gave me a higher closing ratio. Now because everybody's rates are going up. Um, I, I got a lot more um, and, um, people who wanted to get involved in the promotion, but the crazy thing was is my closing ratio went down. But in my closing ratio, I think didn't, it didn't go down necessarily because um, they didn't want to do business with me. My closing ratio went down because I couldn't compete. So they would tell me, yeah, I'm with State Farm. My rate just went up 20%. We would look at all their coverages and stuff. I would I would up their coverages. Maybe a lot of them. A lot of them already called in with 300 combined single limit. A couple of them with 500 combined single limit. But when I would quote what I normally quote, I was like six, seven, eight hundred dollars higher a year, as opposed to where I, before in my promotions I wasn't higher. I was always right in the ballpark, so I was able to get the business off relationship and just off the fact that I'm engaging with them. Right. So it was really crazy. My what I'm saying is is my um, engagement rate was a lot higher, but my actually closing rate and people that became clients of mine was a ton lower. So it was really a kind of a double whammo. I ended up I ended up spending about six hundred dollars total on my promotion. That includes the Kindle Fire I gave away, um, and I made about a little over seven grand. So it was it was fine. It's not that I lost money. It's just that if I would have had the same closing show as I the prior, oh my gosh, I would have had like fourteen fifteen thousand dollars is what I would have brought in in those ten days. Is this so what you was, did on? Really you did this on Facebook. Different. You did this on Facebook. Yeah, I did this. Yeah, all on Facebook. Yep. Yeah. Jason, I think that's just because of a hard market. You're going to get people who are going to shop out because they're ticked off that their price went up 20%, but that doesn't mean that you got to give them a reason to move. And if, if let's just say you're 3% less, they could have a good relationship with their agent and they're only shopping because they're pissed off because it's a hard market and the, and the, and the price went up. So there could be a lot of reasons. It doesn't mean that your sales techniques went down. It could be, you know, the simply due to a hard market that's going to happen. Yeah, it did, it did. And that's what I was saying. You're right. I got more engagement because it was a hard market so they wanted to get they wanted to get they wanted to get in the contest. It was a lot easier to get them in than it had been in the past to get them to give me a quote. It was a lot easier. But I think also my closing ratio didn't go down not so much because of my sales techniques. 
it was amazing. I couldn't be competitive like I normally was. I mean, even though their rate had went up 15 or 20 percent, or they were mad at their agent, my rate was like still so much higher. It was wow. It was really crazy. It was really frustrating. When I saw the numbers coming in, I was ecstatic. I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I am gonna close 75 to 80 percent of these like I did before. But I mean, I wasn't even in the ballpark. I mean, of of some of these quotes, it was really, 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 really wild. Hmm. Nothing so you can do, it Jay. Went well. <laughs> it's a hard one. I know. I know. Yeah. And well, the amazing thing, thing is, I gave is a Kindle Fire this those time. Those I did a Kindle, keep that Kindle Fire based on the fact that it's only one hundred and fifty dollars, as opposed to I was giving away iPads before for four hundred. Mm -hmm. So that shows there that the amount of the price didn't really matter whether it was was an iPad or a Kindle Fire, I actually got more engagement. Now, once again, that could have been because of the hard market or whatever. But, I mean, it, just to say it again, I had had 19 referrals in four weeks on my prior. This one I did for two weeks and had 23. So, and that was over a 10-day period because there's a, you know, there uh, that's 10 business Weekends. days. Yeah. So my engagement was way up. It was, it was huge. Interesting. But now you got leads for the future because you can go back after them. Right. Totally, that's, that's totally, what I was totally. say. Yeah. Are the people that come on there, Jason? Are they basically would they would they be new Facebook fans for you, or are a lot of them existing people you already had some type of relationship with? That's a good question. That that was a good question. First of all, all of them are people that I know or have had relationships have relationships with. Um, some of them had finally just decided, you know, that hey, now is the time to shop. Here's another thing that I find very interesting in these promotions. You get people who want to do business with you, they're just too lazy to do it. And the promotion happens to be that in final incentive that pushes them over. Meaning, I had one guy, he told me, he's like, man, I've been wanting to do business with you for a year. He's like, I just, every time my bill would come, something would come, I forget to call you. And he's like, but this time, my wife got on my ass, he said, because we saw we were giving away the Kindle Fire, and we were wanting to get one of those for our kids anyways. So we thought, hell, well, now's the, now's the time to try it. So it was, it was really weird. It was the final thing that kind of, it was the incentive that put them over the top. Which once again isn't that what incentives are meant to do? Is to right. make them yeah. take an action. Exactly. So, so it was interesting. Basic human behavior. Yeah. That's a, great, yep. that's a great example of it, really. I guess the question wasn't, and you kind of answered it. Was do you treat these promotions as a? I mean, they can be both, obviously, but a, a short-term idea or a long-term goal. Do you know what I mean? Like. To me, if I get someone on my Facebook fan and start to engage and get to know really who I am, what I'm about, we're starting to fight that price game already. You know what I mean? Versus just having a promotion, let's quote it and move on. You know, I, I guess, is that how you view it or a little of both? Well, I mean, I, I'm trying, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I, I think I understand you, but maybe not business and I know that there's people out there that are my fans who have been following me who engage with me I say to my wife all the time person not called me for a quote you know what I mean but I don't want to be the salesy person that pushes them keep in mind I do commercial lines insurance so I'm just I'm just muddling here for personal lines on this on these promotions but the promotion is the thing that actually makes them become um, a long-term relationship with me and a lot of them actually I'm starting to learn this I've got to start writing the life insurance on to, to really lock it down as well um, is that kind of what you're asking I mean where exactly are you going I don't know <laughs> Just kidding. Um, no I mean the point of it is is that my my conflict with promotion that I did my my thing on that is that it becomes, in a lot of ways, simply just a price game, which we know it's obviously there in insurance. You can't hide from it. You can't run from it. If, if, if you're tremendously high, you're not going to probably write the piece of business. But I guess it is if I can get people to become my fans and get to know me and engage me and get to know my value, is that, I guess, is that the greater purpose I'm getting at? So that when there comes a time they get pissed off at the current agent or have another issue, they don't care if it's 200 bucks higher. They want to go with me because they've seen me long enough, trust me, value me, and it's bigger than me just doing a Kindle Fire promotion and getting their business that day. Although that is a great, I guess, incentive, but I guess, can you take this to a bigger picture? That, that was my question. It's a bad question, probably. Well, no, that, that's actually where I was going back. That's what started the conversation is, is that 
I mean, n normally with these things on these promotions, I just need to be in the ballpark. It's not really a numbers game. If they're paying three thousand dollars a year, and I come in at three thousand, or I come in at thirty-one hundred or twenty-nine hundred, the, the business is done. I mean, it's it's done. They're mine. They've been engaging with me. We've created this relationship. Now the time has come to buy the insurance. They were paying. Three, I was like at four grand, and it was that's what was me off is I was like dude I'm not even like anywhere even close as opposed to I had never been this way in my prior promotions to that gotcha. um, well well the, you know the the thing you're trying to get is is does these promotions actually create long-term clients and it absolutely does because these people have been engaging with me for three years now in some terms on my on my Facebook fan page we've been talking we see each other at the games we talk about things that we've talked and posted they've read things about that how I told them about their jewelry floaters and different types of things like that but the promotion is just the thing that finally gets them off the fence say you know what I, I need to have Jason have my insurance anyways because I trust this guy and I don't even know my state farm guy gotcha. the the promotion in the Kindle fire to me is just the thing that gets them off the fence the final make them move and make them act. Do, do you, uh, for the people, those 20 people that called in or the 19 people or whatever the number was that called in, Jason, do you then put them into your um, agency management system in any way? I mean, how do you track them to follow up, you know, six months or a year from now and say, you know, we you called me last year, uh, things are different now because there's always those cycles and, and right. When I had my agency, I mean, there was times where I couldn't be competitive, and then there was times where I was the most competitive, and and you know that. I mean, it, the, the very big weakness of mine, very big weakness. I put them into my computer, um, actually, because when they go into my radar, after we every I don't know what Lori, my assistant, every two weeks, three weeks, a month, I don't know, she takes all the stuff that's in my radar, and we can just upload it directly up into our AMS three hundred and sixty system. So okay. all that information goes in there. Where my weakness comes from that point of what you just said, Rick. actually right now would be a fantastic time with, with the engagement I got just from my promotion showing me that people want to shop or, or they're willing to move. The thing about it is I do need to be hitting those people and saying, hey, we quoted your insurance back in 2010, you know, 2011. Um, I would like to have another opportunity at it. So that, that is we do do the first part or very the second part. And I and I and I'm not saying that that's bad because I'm a bad owner. I think it's bad because I'm so not personal lines focused, and that that's a weakness. Yeah, I but 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 Jason, that holds for commercial lines as well. And one of the things that where I was going with this is that, you know, you, you're putting them in your 360, then you could have your uh, Lori do. Um, do a follow up, you know, the next day, saying thank you for you know contacting us. So they get something physical or, or an email or whatever that says, you know, we really appreciate your calling. We'll check in with you in a few months or a year or whatever. And you do that commercial lines or personal lines. In other words, once they're in the funnel, you just don't let them go. You there, you find ways of, of doing some proactive re outreach to those people, um, one way or the other. That, that's a weakness in my agency, Rick. That's a weakness. Well, you just, you know, I mean, you've, you're doing all these other, it's not, it's just a, it's a progression. <laughs> it doesn't no, necessarily mean it's a weakness. It's just that something, a weakness is always something you can make stronger, and I have to admit that's something I need to make stronger in my agency. You need to hire somebody, Jason. <laughs> I have somebody, Chris. I listen to you, okay? I hired somebody. She's in Colorado, but she's busy, so... I'm, I, yes, I know. I'm gonna have to hire more people. I know, Chris. Okay, I got to make money first. So, so the, the the other three of you, what? So the same the same question. I mean, you've got all of this outreach that's going on with social media. Your Chris, your videos or different things. You're you're getting some kind of connection with people, some kind of awareness that there's people that are either calling in or paying attention to you. Do you then create a program around that to reach out to those people one way or the other? Absolutely. Directly. We, okay. we also have a, S, uh, a CRM tool, so okay. we utilize that CRM tool, and then we have clusters. We probably have about 700, 650 to 700 different blocks, meaning, for example, we target veterans. We'll, get all, we'll gather all this information, and it'll be in a veterans, so it'll be under veterans, and that's how we target market them. It's all veterans. You're segmenting. You're segmenting. Yes. We do that with Shark Cycle with all of their sure. clients. 
they give us all their database, and we target market these people because what are they looking at? Motorcycles, Victory Motorcycles. They're also looking at American product because they only sell American products over there, so we target market that. So we have everything. We have attorneys. We have plumbers. We we don't go to everybody, but we try to target market. You know, if you're 50 and older, older then we, we have the ERP program, which all okay. that is to do is to get people – to get an opportunity, quote, the AARP product that we sell is way overpriced. So we know we're not going to sell them with the AARP product because, you know, they're 30, 35 percent higher all the time. But it gets yeah. them free to say, oh, this is what they offer. Yeah. You know, let's explain to you why this is different coverage. And then once we can hook them in, that we can communicate with them, hey, this product is 35 percent more. And if you want to buy it, no problem. But this is what we found less expensive. Here's the good, good coverages, and let them choose. Yeah, yeah. So I do you, the same exact thing on AARP. The, our stuff is so high here too, but I do the same thing. But it's it's interesting if you don't if you don't do anything with that data. I mean, what why 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 market? I mean, we're, well, and that was that's sort of my point though. But that's you know that's where I think even in, in in the old way traditional marketing i think that's where agencies in general fell down in the process is that they didn't they didn't see this as an ongoing process that people don't they're not always ready to buy today but they might be 3 3 weeks from now or a month from now or, or a year from now or 5 years from now and somehow you need to keep them engaged uh, connected or connected with them and um, and today we've got this huge uh, lead generator get you know with social media whether it's LinkedIn or, or YouTube or Twitter or Facebook you're getting people that are connecting with you one way or the other and without without violating their you know the the, the spirit of social media and or their, their quote privacy I think there's ways of engaging those people and keeping them you know aware of what you're doing so that was just my thought but you think about that invading privacy. Look at Pinterest. Pinterest says everything about everybody. If if they're on Pinterest, they don't care about privacy. Yeah. No, I, I, that's true with a lot of it. I just meant in terms of I. I guess I don't even mean privacy. I mean the fact that you're on social media. You don't want to be then spammed with a sales campaign. But no, but no. Uh, you know. I'm okay with it. Just click it out of there. You know. It don't bother <laughs> me. <laughs> Because we are. I mean, we're getting spammed every day. Yeah, I know. I mean, when, you're, when you're on Facebook, if you liked Nike, Nike ads show up. Well, that's Facebook selling Nike ads. I mean, yeah, no, I know. Or Adidas or whatever other company. Apple. Or whatever it is. Yeah, sure. I, I don't. I, I don't. It doesn't bother me. Sorry. Chris, by the way, on Monday, on Monday, I'm uh, I'm uh, participating in my 35th Boulder Boulder. I was going to ask because last year it was right before you were only a week or two weeks so you do that, right? Yeah, yeah. What is it? Memorial, Memorial Day. Yeah. Yeah. What is it? It's a, a Boulder. It's called Boulder Boulder, and it's a, a race that has fifty thousand entry in, entrants, and there's now sixty five of us that have done all of them. So it started thirty five years ago, and at that time there was seventeen hundred people that ran. It's a ten k. There was oh. seventeen hundred people that that finished, and now there's over fifty thousand that finished. But but there's sixty five of us that have done all thirty five. Wow. Uh, left. <laughs> it, it, each year that goes down. <laughs> uh, you know, people die. They, you know, I, all kinds of. Stuff. I mean, with, if people, I'm getting up there, you know, and so I'm thinking people that were fifty or sixty when they started it the first time, they're not doing it anymore. <laughs> well, this is this how proud of this is just everybody give them applause, you know. <laughs> really good. Really good. I like That's amazing. It. Good luck with it, that. Wow. Well, it's it's a very cool. It's it's more. It's a happening. It's a huge event, and it finishes in the CU Stadium, the University of Colorado Stadium, oh, okay. and then they. But Christian, this is the part you'd love. It's got a huge Memorial Day um, celebration. So we have a flyover uh, by you know the Air Force. And they have, uh, they typically have a Medal of Honor winner uh, or two. They've had up to two or three, I think, that's the talk, that give a speech. The whole thing is all about Memorial Day and, and honoring the, awesome. the vets and stuff. And so it's really a spectacular event. I run my first triathlon this year on June 14th. And for those that don't know, that is the best day of the year. It's Flag Day. Mm -hmm. Very cool. <laughs> Very cool. And if you, I bought a special outfit that says it's got. <laughs> 
the yellow, it's got the yellow flag, which is the snake, don't tread on me, and it says liberty. It's yeah. perfect for Very the cool. deck. Uh, where, are you do, where, are you, where are you doing that? That is in middle, uh, Middlefield, Connecticut. Oh, okay. It's, um, it's an Olympic triathlon, so I will wow. hopefully complete it in eight hours. Oh, God. <laughs> well, good luck. God bless you. That's all. Yeah, no I need it. Hey, everybody, yeah. I have to let you know. I have to get off of here. I, uh, do you guys happen well, to know who Daniel Burris is? Yes. I, I am interviewing him for a podcast. Here in ten minutes, and I need to get oh, off cool. here. And I need to get prepared and everything like that. He's going to be on Agents Influence next uh, next month. So very nice. Uh, I also just interviewed another guy by the name of, by the name of Mike Manus. This guy is out there. I mean, Mike Manus from Square One Consulting. I just did a podcast with him yesterday. Chris, no disrespect, you are my number one so far downloaded uh, <laughs> podcast. But I have to tell you, this guy is like so far out there, and the way he thinks about the insurance industry and what it's going to be like, um, he calls 2013 the year of the chaos, and to where this is the year that all of the change going forward grows out of. And this guy, he, I actually had him on for an hour and 15 minutes, so I'm going to have to split it up into two two or three podcasts because I, I didn't want the guy to be quiet. The way he thinks is like if you're not understanding that the insurance industry is changing and you listen to this guy and you're not a little bit scared in your in your uh, in your box or briefs, uh, you 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 uh, this guy is out there. So anyways, so I, I appreciate this. I think this forum is awesome as it says at the bottom I'm one badass social dude. I gotta get out of here and uh, I love seeing all of you Brent Kerry, Chris, Rick, see you guys later, okay? Have a great weekend. Have a great you weekend. Just... Happy Memorial Day. Hey, Rick, have you – I know we had talked about this a few weeks ago that there were, you weren't going to think about adding any people. Do you think that – do you still think that? No, I wasn't thinking about not adding people. I think it should or be by maybe invitation. Maybe somebody else said that, not the board. No, no, it was, it was more about being – it was by invitation. Some people have – of. Who we, I don't even know, or you, we, none of us probably know, have asked to be members, and I think, I think what we everybody sort of agreed was that we could and should perhaps add people, but it should by should be by invitation. In other words, yeah. people that we know. Yeah. You know, I ask is because um, Mathis, I don't, I always call him Ted, but his name is Theron. He's mm -hmm. he's friendly with you, or at least yep, he, I know he, him. With all of us here, and I. I just met him through LinkedIn, and we started talking. Safeco, I I like the guy. I like what he has to say. I think he's way forward thinking for somebody who works for an insurance company. I'm not criticizing <laughs> him at all. I, I'm thinking like this guy thinks he would be a great attribute. He go, he looks at things a little differently than we do. Yeah. But um, when I tell you, just a gentleman, the guy is a gentleman, and uh, he he reached out to me and said I, he'd like to put a group together, exactly like this. And I said. Before we put a group together, let's see, you know. Oh no, no, we could add them. Why don't Why don't you do this? Why don't it, I mean that's fine. I it can be anybody. We can certainly have more people because I don't know that we've ever had ten. We had six at the most on this. So, um, why don't we? Um, why don't you just have him? Um, or just give me the information. Let me know what his Google uh, addresses or whatever, and I'll add him to the hangout group, and then I'll also add him to the calendar invite, and then he'll be on. Sure, you know. So I absolutely, just it would be good, um, you get a few more people with a few different, yeah, yeah. You know, different. It, you know, Katie once in a while can show up, and she's a carrier person. But it would be good to have one or two uh, carrier people that participate as well. I've never heard Katie P. Um, she hasn't been in the ones that I've been, but you know, I think it's interesting to hear what they're thinking on their end. Yes, yes, um, I agree. We need more estrogen <laughs> in this panel. I don't know, Carrie. You, you scared away a lot of the company people with your post today. <laughs> oh, well, you know what? No, Sometimes it was good. You I like say it. what you got to say, right? Yeah, absolutely. And I, I always speak the truth, and it just, there you go. <laughs> you know the one thing we don't have? And I, no matter where I speak, I hear the same thing. Agents are with agents and defending agents and protecting agents, which I do the same thing. And companies do the same thing, but there is no combination. And I maybe it was you, Rick, who wrote an article. Somebody wrote an article, and they were talking about when will agents and company people actually feel, you know, that partnership, which is the biggest bunch of BS. But in order for both of us to succeed in the future, I think there needs to be some. There's no trust. 
Did you, no. read, Chris, did you read my post that I wrote yesterday? I did not, but I'm going to go read it right after this. Do, do that, because I'm, I'm talking about some of the things you're talking about. Yeah, but let, me, let me say from a perspective point of view, that has been um, a topic that's been discussed, in, and once in a while it gets a little better or do, in different areas, but that's, that's, a per, that's, that's been an issue forever. Yeah. Uh, for a long, long, long time, and it's not that it shouldn't, it couldn't be solved. And I think again, w w you know, it would be so much easier to to solve that problem today because of social media. You mm -hmm. get to know some of the your underwriters, or or they get to know us better as people rather than just this name out there. And um, yeah, it's a challenge for you know, sure, it, Chris. It, it, the, and, the, and the trust is the big issue, by the way. Mm -hmm. Clearly, yeah. Is. I just had a conversation with a marketing rep uh, just last week, kind of on this subject. And at her company, she was talking about how many of the marketing reps would never friend their agents, for example, on Facebook. They thought it was stupid, and why would they do that? And I'm like, we had this conversation. I'm like, it just makes zero sense. I said, you know, I get to know you and your kids, and I know that you bought a new house, and we have conversations and get to know each other. And I said, it's just like any other relationship. I said, why? You know, what is the hesitancy from a marketing rep to not develop that relationship with an agent? That's their bread and butter. And she's like, they just don't want them to know what's going on in their lives or who they are. I'm like, well, they're stupid. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, and yeah. Brent, the, the problem is in the industry, we call them marketing reps. They're not marketing reps. They're number reps. They only That's bring true. numbers to us. That's all yeah. they do. Read Carrie's post. Wait, you go read that. You'll enjoy it. <laughs> You know what we did when I I was actually I started my career as an underwriter and I used to go out and visit agents all the time and we would have agents come in and we would we'd basically hang out together and I think there needs to be more of that your local underwriters need to be aware of who you are you need to know them better it, it I'll tell you it makes a huge huge difference but the and companies don't want that Rick well I know I know I went to a rotating underwriter we will never almost never have the same underwriter when we call oh, for geez. it's a rotating Symbol. We don't. You're not going to build a. How can you build a, rela a relationship with a rotation? Yeah, and mistake. Yeah, not good. I agree with you. I think the re the relationship is everything. But yeah. all the companies are doing the opposite. It's wow. not about. Other than I should say State Auto, which we have the same, and I I like picking up the phone and calling her because I feel comfortable. And oh, yeah. I always give them more business because I feel comfortable picking them up. And but, there's the point. And there is the point. I mean, yeah. you know, you, you right. get somebody that you like, that you've got a relationship with, they'll get the business. I mean, it's just so short-sighted sometimes the way we go. And, of course, they have all of these. What, Brett, to your, your point, I mean, all the social media stuff freaks out most companies completely. Yeah. I mean, you know. I mean, she's like, well, we can't, you know, what if and this and that. And I'm like, oh, I know. I'm not trying to sell anything, like just to get to know the agents at a different level. I'm like, you know, I said the reason why we're having this conversation right now, and, and, and to her point, she's a little proactive. I don't think the company is really even fond of her doing it, honestly. And she said, oh my gosh, it makes my job so much easier because I can come into an office and actually have some frame of reference of, hey, I saw you went on that trip last week, and how was that? And I'm like, yeah. duh. You know, I, it just. But she's like, well, no one else would even think about it. They think I'm crazy, and I'm out. I'm out of my mind. I'm like, well, there you go. Yeah, so, that's it. <laughs> hey, Rick. Uh, quick question for you, or maybe uh, Carrie or Brent has the answer. Do you know any updates on Project Cap? Is it is it coming along? Is it getting? Yeah, I can give you. I can give you kind of an update. I think. Um, at the end of this, um, actually by June 3rd or 4th or the first week in June or, or whatever, they're going to make uh, the the site available for internal, for agents. It'll be ready to accept them to go on and, and put in their profiles to, to okay. actually to, to sign up essentially and and you you uh, then I and I don't know price I, I don't know the pricing part of it or, or even if there is I think there's different levels but you can go in and then set up your uh, your profile right. then in Michigan and Indiana by the end of the month uh, or early July they will start the uh, the, the the uh, quoting piece, so the comparative rating uh, that'll happen, and they're going to test it in those two states first, and then you know evolve it. But uh, yeah, you know, since Chip has gotten on, I think they refocused, so they stopped just worrying about all of the services piece um, and not paying it. They lost track, I think, or vision uh, of getting the the portal finished. And the portal is hopefully well, it will be. Um, Chip also has a, a vision for that being. Um, uh, 
sort of a, a marketplace for products and services for both agents and consumers ultimately. So it's no, it won't be just about a comparative rate. There'll be a lot more um, richness to the to the site than that. So I think that uh, they've got that focus now. They've got Zywave, uh, Easy Links rather, um, Easy Links that is going to be the rating engine, uh, which they needed. You know that could have been done. What two years ago probably, but anyway, now it's at that at that spot, and Chip is moving it along, making great progress, I think. And so, you know, I think I think we'll know a lot in the next six months. I think that'll really tell the story whether they've really pulled it all together, whether they're where they're they're making great progress. Um, but well, but, it's, is but it is encouraging. It's encouraging. That's good, and I and I I just hope they stay on top of this because I think it's going to affect. A lot of agencies, you know, a lot of people say, "Oh, you like social media? You're against it." I'm not against it at all. I think it's great for even even if it helps a small amount. I just wonder how, if I look back at some of the stuff that I've watched, I don't think they were prepared for the algorithm change, and I think that threw them for a loop. Now, once again, we're going to have another major algorithm change, which could be the biggest. And Matt Cut says it's going to be the biggest, which it probably is going to be the biggest. Yeah. What's yeah. Happen? I'm just curious on the response. You know, yeah, you know, I don't know that I don't I don't know all the detail around that. I mean, I think I think the fact that they've got their ad is placed now where agents can actually get on and sign up. That's a big that that's indicating yeah. that the core of the of the site is there. Mm -hmm. And then like I said, they're going to do Michigan and Indiana and a lot of a lot of what will drive people to the site will be um, a combination of things, but a lot of it will be traditional media as well as agents themselves promoting it or talking about it, the associations promoting it, both online and offline. I mean, I think it's got to be, it's going to take all of that. And quite honestly, I hope it grows slowly. <laughs> I think I think you just need time to really learn and understand how this is all going to happen, and I don't think you want to. I, I think there's danger, in, uh, it, it, and they can't do this anyway. But if they if they were, for example, able to roll this all out nationally, uh, the rating piece on one day, I think that'd be suicidal. Um, so I think carriers are going to want to see. Um, you know they've got a pretty good group of carriers, more than just the investors that are participating in Michigan and Indiana, and they'll have to grow that number. They'll have to grow the agencies that participate, and then we'll see how the consumer world um, reacts to it. And, and you know the other part of this, Chris, is that, and this is a, something that I worry about, is that, and get, given your comments earlier about how agents are on social media and that aren't on social media and doing things. If you're an agent and you get a referral um, because a, a, somebody picks you, you know, a, a consumer goes in to the site says, "This is the person, the agent I want to do business with." Um, how many of how many of the agents will commit to getting back to that person in a timely fashion? Because if you don't, you 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 know, undermine the whole process, right? I mean, I agree. Today's world, yeah. I mean, people aren't going to wait for two I mean, days to, to hear back. Yeah, exactly. And who yeah. knows? That? It's kind of like, you know, one of the biggest things that, that we find successful with the Internet is that um, we will call them for a minimum of seven days. We won't stop. And you would be shocked on how many we write on day six and day seven. Hmm. Because what happens, Rick, is if a shopper is shopping online and whether they come to us, if they come to us first, I'm, I'm sometimes okay because we're going to get back to them within the first two minutes. That lead comes in. It's critical, that first five minutes. We feel it's very, very, very important. But what ends up happening is if they went to ten agents, now they're getting ten phone calls, which they're probably only getting six or seven. They forget right. about it. So that's why we, we find, at least we feel, because we're asking them, such a huge success. Like yesterday we wrote one, day six, once again, we find them day six, day seven, because what happens is people stop calling, and we don't. Right. And that persistency, you need to be persistent. Unless if they tell you to go pound, you know, shit in the hat. Yeah, 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 right, right, right. Leave them alone. But otherwise, right, yeah. you got to you got to keep calling them because what happened is they probably went to too many, and you know, too many is. And if they got ten, probably only five are calling them back. But right, right, those five keep calling. The yeah, but here's the, but here's the other thing. That first two to five minutes, like you said, is critical, and that's the part that I I worry about. Will agents have the staff, the ability, the uh, the the commitment to get back to people 
that and be that responsive and that and that's the part that I wonder about mm -hmm. because if if a, if a, I'm a consumer and I go on and I you know I fill out some information and I and I go through a, a, a primary uh, quote process rating quote process and I find an agent that I think yeah this guy's just down the street or a couple miles from me and yeah you know and you click on on you know your agency and then I don't hear from you holy cow you know, bad so yeah. we'll see I wonder what the technology but, is um, with project cap like when a lead comes in like for example on mine I literally just hit a button in it and it goes right and it calls that phone number that they punched in so I don't have to I can literally be on the road and, and just literally one one touch of one button and it calls that person back I wonder if they're gonna have similar technology to that. well they're not gonna be doing the calling it, it'll be a no, no, but the to technology you. though the technology well, of it. Well, I yeah, but the technology will be that that consumer um, picks you, and the information will then flow into your agency, and then it it'll be your technology that will right. respond back. Now, when he when that consumer picks you, the the response to you whether I don't and I and I guess I don't really it, basically it'll be an email, a message of some sort that'll go to you, um, that'll go immediately to you. Now, how you handle it will be be part of the issue okay. and you know it's going to forward all the rating information there all of the stuff that they filled out to whatever degree they filled it out sometimes they may bail uh, before they finalize all that and just say I, this is the agent I want to have call well, you'll get whatever information they've interesting they provided yeah we'll see you know I, I think that's why I say I think it's I hope it doesn't happen too fast in a way I mean I know everybody wants this you know thought it should have happened two years ago well once it starts happening I think it's going to take time to really work out some of those issues oh, and yeah. make sure that it's done right interesting so we'll see devil's always in the details you know it is isn't it <laughs> It well, always looks easy. Is everybody going to Brand Camp? Obviously, you are, Rick. Brent? Yeah. Mary? I would, you don't know how much I would love to go, but I just don't know if I can. We'll just leave it at that. Brent? I'd be the same way, but I, I am not attending. I know I should and I need to, but I am not going to be attending, so I'm sorry. I'd show up in costume, man, you know. What's that? I'd show up in costume. I know you would. That, that would be outstanding. <laughs> pay, pay for me to get there and I'll do it. <laughs> it's actually well, right around, believe it or not, is it what, November 5th? Is that right? 4th through the 6th in Baltimore at the Monaco Hotel. My 40th yep. birthday Monica. is November 8th. Well, you've got, so you'd have time. So here's, here's know, the thing. I know, but it wouldn't that be here, Here's the thing, Carrie. We're going to, we're going to ask people to uh, submit themselves I guess uh, because we have you know there was a woman that worked for our firm um, who passed away from cancer a couple of years ago and we have a scholarship right uh, and Jason Jason was the one that got the scholarship last time and so you know you will I'll, I'll circle back with you but you got okay. both of you guys That's and fine. you should submit yourself uh, for that scholarship uh, it has to be a young agent um, somebody that's you know Doing the kind of things you're doing, and um, who knows, maybe you could get picked for for that. You know, and uh, for sure. you never know. Cool. And so when that happens, we pay for the registration and, and flight. So sweet. You definitely let me know because you know can't hurt to apply. Small investment, trust me, it's well worth it. Oh, I know yeah, what gonna, it is. I have no, I have no doubt about that. We're going to have a good group this year too. I think we've got, um, you know, with with people like Chris and Ryan and Jason and um, Augie Ray and I, there's a lot of people. But the fact that it's on the East Coast, I think, is really um, making it That's easier. Well, it's a lot of people on the industry that are very involved happen to be on the East Coast, so. Yeah, I've so it'll make it easy. It'll make it easy to uh, get, to gather up some good people. I think. We're looking forward to it. It's always well, guys, we've blend, right? Oh, you yeah. always have absolutely. An interesting, well, at least the last one was a very interesting blend of people. Yes. Which, yeah. We get you know because you get some you get some carrier people and you get some association people and you get the agents. Um, and I I've always found that mix. It, it gets back to your the whole thing about relationships relationships and stuff and if we can start having these conversations and 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 lay out some of the issues I think that there's ways that following brand camp we can um, we can communicate you know those those discussions and that people listen or pay attention and um, and maybe we can 
maybe we can move the the bar a, a point or two anyway, Chris. <laughs> it's always it's always a chance. I I I don't think there's any question you're moving the bar, and, and you're bringing a ton of attention to insurance agents who don't understand brand and don't understand an identity of a brand, and they just don't see any importance or value to it. And they need to. It is if your social media marketing. You have no identity. You have no brand. What do you have? Nobody's going to listen yeah. to you. Yeah. No, listen. You know, and it, so it'll be fun. It'll be good. And of course, we'll we'll I'll get in touch with you um, once we're once we're out there and live. And um, what did I do? Am I still? Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hold on a minute. Ay ay ay. Well, I can't see you. <laughs> uh, let's see if I can swish this back. Anyway, what I was going to say is, is that um, you said something about the possibility of doing a, a video at some point, and we'd love to have you do that. Who are you talking to? I'm talking to uh, to uh, Chris. Oh, yeah. I, uh, I, I, my intentions are to bring um, my right hand. Uh, she's a brilliant marketing person. She worked for Kirsty Alley for over two years. Lived in her house, and Kirsty Alley. Oh, wow. Is, is a brilliant marketing girl, and this girl is only 20, I think she's 28, 29, and wow. when I tell you she's my right hand, she's, when I, if you see some of the stuff she's working on and doing, it's, it's just phenomenal, <laughs> just extremely, um, she's an artist, is really what she is, she's a brilliant marketer, but she's an artist, and uh, I plan on bringing her, and I, I think it's just fascinating, she could share some really fascinating things that people oh, cool. on away, so. Oh, that'd be, that sounds like a lot of fun, absolutely. Well, guys, we've uh, we're at uh, ten twelve, so we've gone an hour and twelve minutes, uh, which is great. Good conversation, but I probably should let you all. Uh, Thank you, guys. Happy get back to the business night. of insurance. All right, yeah. thanks, everybody. Thanks, guys. Memorial weekend. Be safe. Absolutely.